Hey guys, what's up? Unrested here. I'm actually doing a follow-up JFAC to a JFAC I did a while back called uh, The Abuse of Japanese Talent by Its Audience or Fans. And this was about Becky, who you may not or may know as a talent who is a half-British woman. I believe she is half-British. I know she's half. She's half-Japanese, half-British, and recently uh, she had kind of a falling out with her audience when it was found out that she had had dinner with a married man she had in the past been known as a talent actress, variety show host, singer, who was well known not just for the fact that she had all these different talents and was doing all these different things, but also for the fact that people fawned over her for her purity. She had never been in any kind of scandal in the past. Um, not saying this is some sort of big scandal or that she's super guilty of this. There's actually no proof that she had anything more than dinner with this guy who she ate with. Um, but the guy was a married man, and this had her having a fallout with her entire audience to the point that when she was on a TV show um, after this had come out, this scandal had come out, um, over, what was it, 10,000 calls? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting this mixed up. 1,000 calls over 10 minutes were audience members calling in to have her taken off of TV. They were so upset and angered that she was still on TV after this scandal, which is total BS, because uh, the guy in this never got any kind of reprimand from anybody. Um, but now there's a follow-up article. So I want to read that and then talk to you a little bit more about my own personal thoughts about kind of the sexism that goes on, about how female, female stars are attacked by their audience here in Japan. In Korea, too, it's actually a pretty big problem in Korea to the point that some of those people actually commit suicide when they get attacked by their audience. It's so harsh. Tokyo, Japanese talent Becky, who has been on an enforced leave from the Japanese business world, has been ended in January due to her affair with musician Enon Kawatani. It's expected that she will return as early at the end of May. Uh, the scandal is finally coming to a close following Kawatani's recently announced divorce and Becky's attempts to publicly apologize to his ex-wife. The 32-year-old singer is expected to make her comeback. They mean... Um, I believe uh, they mean Becky, although I don't really think of her as a singer. Her her music isn't at the forefront of Japanese music and talent. Um, I mean, she's, she's a great variety show host, but her music really isn't anything to write home about. Let's put it that way. The 32-year-old singer is expected to make her comeback with an appearance on TBS. Nakai Masahiro no Kinyobi no Smaioru Tachie. What? I know what that show is, I just never even knew that was the name of it. <laughs> One of her former regular TV programs before the scandal broke in January, Sports Nippon reported Tuesday. On Monday, Kawatani announced on his official blog that he and his wife have officially divorced, but did not cite reasons for details of the circumstances. I will do my best to mature as a musician and an individual, he wrote, asking his fans to continue to support him. Becky fell from grace in January after Japanese tabloid Shukan Bunshun released intimate photos of SNS messages. Oh, so there was, okay, this wasn't mentioned before, but there was actually um, SMS messages that uh, were intimate. Well, looking a little bit guilty there, but at the same time, what happened to her was far too harsh. Between her and Kawatani causing a major stir. However, can, a condition that Becky herself has set for her comeback, according to Japanese media, is to officially apologize to Kawatani's former wife. After she dropped out of circulation, Becky apparently attempted to contact Kawatani's wife by sending her a letter in February in which she described her regret at becoming intimate with the musician who Becky thought was single at the time that she began the affair, which is actually kind of odd because I think his marriage was like announced on national TV and there's not like a lot of channels on Japanese TV. You've got like 12, I think. Her letter, however, was refused by Kawatani's wife and no contact was established, Sports Nippon reported. Having no other way to contact Kawatani's wife, Becky ironically took the risk to contact the scandal leak source Shukan Bunshun directly asking for its cooperation. On April 22nd, the head of Sun Music Production Company, Becky's management agency, visited Shukan Boonshun's editorial department with a letter from Becky addressed to the magazine's editor in which she confirmed her affair with Kawatani. Oh, okay, so now she's confirmed it on top of it, okay. And wrote that her greatest wish is to express her regret to Kawatani's ex-wife face-to-face. Shukan Boonshun's published the full contents of Becky's letter at the end of April, though it isn't clear how the former Miss Kawatani reacted to Becky's letter. Sources close to the case comment that Becky's return to TV has been scheduled in accordance with the anticipated meeting, a Sports Nippon reported. 
suggesting that all parties involved have decided to finally move on. Following the scandal, Becky lost all her sponsors, stopped appearing in all 10 of her regular TV programs. See, I told you, she's more known for TV than music. Including the popular Nippon TV Tensai Shimura Dobutsue, Sekai no Hate Mare Ite Q programs in her regular Tokyo FM radio program. If her return is indeed realized, it will be her first TV appearance in three months. I actually saw her on TV last night, and she was actually making an apology uh, to one of the members of SMAP, which I, I'm not really sure. It seemed really rehearsed. It really was, like, uncalled for. It was unneeded. And I'm not saying that, like, it's uncalled for because she shouldn't be forgiven. I'm saying it's uncalled for because you don't see that stupid musician who also had an affair and cheated on his wife. Mind you, Becky wasn't cheating on anybody. She was just having an affair with a guy who was a married man. Uh, she has to come on and make an apology, but this guy still hasn't made any kind of, you know, on-air apology. It's just total bullshit. You know, it's, it's only a one-way... Kawatani and his wife married in last July. In fact, he apparently kept a secret from the public. Really? I don't think so. I knew about it. And I don't know, I don't really follow media that close in Japan. And Becky, when the two got close in November the same year, according to Becky's letter, which Shukan Bunshun published, the late, the, sorry, she learned that Kawatani was married after the two began a relationship and she had fallen in love with him. Quote, I should have stopped the relationship at the time, Becky wrote, expressing her regret for continuing her involvement with the 27-year-old vocalist. The letter also implies that Kawatani and Becky have not been in touch since the scandal broke and that she no longer has feelings for him. Yeah, you, you can imagine why she doesn't have feelings for the guy after he totally ruined her career and took absolutely no reprimand from it. No, his, sec his record trails, his record trails, his record sales didn't drop. He didn't lose anything in this deal. He didn't get a slap on the wrist even. I mean, the, you know, the worst thing that's happened to him is he divorced his wife, who he obviously never loved if he was cheating on her the whole time that he was married. So, ooh, too bad for him. So I guess that's kind of the one-sided way you'll see the media falls here, totally crushing anybody who's a female talento, and I guess just letting the guys escape. Uh, another thing that you'll notice in Japan is manzai comedians or comedians who cheat on their wives, they just get laughed at. Like, they're just kind of like, ah, of course you cheated on your wife, you silly comedian. But then Becky, who's, you know, a talento and an idol and a singer, gets everything taken away from her 10 TV shows, all her sponsorships ripped off air and 1,000 complaints in like the first 10 minutes she's on TV after a scandal. So it's totally one-sided, totally unfair. Uh, what's happened to her is total BS. Um, and it seems like now there's finally a follow-up and she's gradually coming back on TV, I hope, for her. I'm not really a big fan of Becky's. I don't love Becky's stuff. I think she's probably a pretty nice person. Uh, she seems like a cool girl. I've actually talked to a guy who is... Um, his, his job is to set up for TV shows to go overseas and he sets up everything from like the, the cameras being rented over there, the airplane tickets that they buy, the hotels that they'll stay at. And he's worked in unison with Becky and he says she's a very nice girl, um, that she's very down to earth, um, that she'll switch to English when him and her were both alone to talk. And that just means just to talk about like stuff that they have to do for the job. All right. Um, he said, very, very nice, down-to-earth woman. Um, so, I, like I said, I'm sure she's a very good person. And, uh, you know, the fact that she's getting totally trashed in the media because of this slip-up, which is more so this guy's fault for cheating on his wife than Becky just, you know, not knowing a guy was married. Apparently, she didn't know the guy was married and she was going out with him. If that's really the truth, then she was totally screwed over in this whole thing. She's going out with a guy who's lying to her that says he's single when he's just been married. On top of it, she thinks she's totally going out with a single guy and doing everything okay. Then she finds out not only is she dating a guy who's married, he hasn't told her that she's married, and now she's going to lose everything that she ever worked hard for because this guy lied to her while he gets absolutely no reprimand and her career is crushed. So yeah, like I've said before in the past, Japan, about 50 years back when it comes to equal treatment for the sexes, um, you know, maybe some people are going to come on here and disagree with this, but obviously this is a prime example of how this is still very, very true, how um, females are still treated very poorly in almost any industry that they're in here in Japan. Um, sad but true fact, I, hopefully something that Japan can socially progress past, and you know, I'm not a guy who's like, oh, go feminism, stuff like that. I actually, I am, you know, uh, Humanist first. I care about all human beings first. Um, I'm not, you know, pro 
alpha male MGTOW going my own way type of guy either. I'm just a guy who says you should treat women fairly in the workplace when it comes to Japan. Anyway, guys, I hope you like what you heard here today. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Guys, if you are a fan of Japanese mythology, let me just take a second here to direct you to my new channel, Horror Kingdom. Most people think it's just about horror stories and stuff like that. It's actually not. It's also about Japanese yokai demons and mythology. Um, a lot of mythology from Japan. Everything from the Kirin to the ho o -u, A lot of the creatures that you would see and things like Monster Hunter, uh, Pokemon, Bleach, um, and many, many, many other manga and anime and video games from Japan. If you like that kind of stuff, my new channel is totally for you. A lot of the stuff on there really isn't actually that scary. The only reason I've put yokai on there is yokai, by definition, are Japanese demons. So being on a channel that's just kind of about exploring and discovering Japan, mm, it's kind of iffy, but on a channel about horror, well, demons seem to fit a little better, so that's why I put them on there. Nonetheless, there's an entire playlist right now. I think I have six yokai on there, and I'm literally going to go through about a hundred to... I mean, there's literally hundreds upon hundreds of yokai, so I could do this series for ages. And it's doing great. It's very popular with my viewers there. But I want to let those of you who still haven't transitioned over to the other channel to check that out, that there is more there than just horror. I would love to have you over there. Every subscriber is a big thank you. If you watch these videos, even if you don't like horror, if you want to somehow tell me thank you, just go over there to Horror Kingdom and, and subscribe. If you don't know what it is, I'll put it down in the link in the notes below on this video. It's in the sidebar of my suggested channels on top of that. If there's any ever way you've ever wanted to say thank you to me, I've never really asked for a Patreon or uh, a Kickstarter or anything like that. Can you just say thank you by subscribing to the channel even if you don't like horror? It would help me out a lot in getting views because then I show up higher on suggested views for people checking out my new horror channel and it's only got about a thousand subscribers. So please, please, if I can beg you for one small thing, can I beg you for that, please. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Um, your response to my most recent videos with the debacle that I faced, something I don't want to delve into too deep on the end of this video, made me realize I have the most freaking awesomest viewers ever. Like, you guys lifted me up when I was just in a dark place there for a while. I was seriously like wow should i even keep making videos like and, and you guys were like yes scott yes scott please you, you know you make mistakes you are human it's okay we forgive you you're awesome i love you so much viewers you guys are the best a big hug and a kiss smooch smooch right here mm. go ahead put your put your put your head up to the screen come on mm. Mm. i don't care if you're a guy it's okay mm. you beautiful people stay cool stay awesome Thanks for watching. JFAC, Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. Have a good one.